Hi guys, PJ here. Today I am working on a Peugeot 308 and all I'm going to do today is show you quickly how to remove the factory fitted radio, where to get your uh, power supply from so that it goes on and off with the ignition correctly and also give you the part numbers for the bits and bobs you may need to put a new radio in there. So with that in mind, you've chose a Kenwood, Sony, whatever brand you've chose, you can either go for a single DIN unit which is sort of this depth, the same as the original, or a double DIN. The bigger one okay now you're going to need a wiring harness adapter i've got one here made by a company called auto leads and the part number is pc2864 and we've also got an aerial adapter again made by auto leads pc5137 fascia adapter we have one made by connects 2 there we go and the part number for this one is CT24PE09. Now, as you can see, this, this particular one will fit either a single DIN radio, so the smaller radio, or the bigger double DIN radio. So it's, it's sort of a universal. It comes with a little pocket in the packaging lock so that you can make it uh, the right shape to fit the smaller radio. So you're going to need those, okay? You can get this sort of stuff from eBay, Amazon, that type of place. You're going to need access to your fuse box, which is in your glove box, so drop your glove box door down. It's behind here, there's like a twist uh, thing to turn up, very easy, turn that, pull the flap off, put that out of the way. The fuses are, if I can see there, buried down below. I'll just get you a torch on that so you can see better. There we go, there's your fuses at the bottom there. Now. On these cars, depending on spec and model, you'd, uh, you'd need a multimeter or one of them little screwdrivers with a light in the end of it to test which fuse goes on and off with the ignition. Generally speaking, on these Peugeots, because I've you know I've sort of done loads and loads of these over the years, normal bet is one of the little brown five amp fuses that is a good uh, ignition switch. But we'll go ahead and test that right now. Okay, so to show you what I'm on about, we'll test the little five amp fuse there. It's in between a 15 amp blue and a 10 amp red on this particular car. There we go, we're touching the end of the uh, probe on the end of the fuse. Now if you've got one of them little screwdrivers that lights up, just touch the top of the fuse just in the same way. And make sure you get a zero readout. There we go, that's zero readout. So that is off with the ignition off. Once you turn the ignition on, that readout will change to something like 11.5 or 12.5 volts in that sort of uh, region and then you'll know that that fuse is ignition switched. Also make sure you're using an accessory fuse, something for, I don't know, cigarette lighter or something like that. Don't use anything to do with ABS, ECU, airbags or anything. So if a free little handbook, make sure that it's an accessory fuse. Like I say, a lot of these 308s, that 5 amp brown fuse is an accessory fuse that switched ignition, so it's a good source. Okay, we can now move on, now we've ascertained what fuse we're going to use to actually remove the radio. Now this is really pretty simple on one of these. You need a pair of these universal U keys. Again, Amazon, you know that type of place to get these from, very easy to get. Local car shops probably got them. And pop them in. You're probably going to need both hands for this because you need to pull them apart. So literally spread the keys and then pull and the radio will come out. Might not do this for you one handed. No. Okay, when you've moved it just a little bit, so it's just released, don't tug it, because it's actually clipped in below here as well. You just wanted to release the mechanism, nothing more. You're then gonna need something called a bojo tool or a plastic scraper. Here we are, this is a bojo tool. It's just a little, little pry lever, basically. Uh, don't use a screwdriver, because obviously you will damage all the plastic surfaces all the way around if you try and lever it, it'll make a right mess. Make sure you get a plastic one, They're like a pound or whatever. It's well worth investing in some of these or other form of plastic scraper. So we're just gonna get that out now. So what we do, needed two hands for that, guys, so uh, hence the, the, the pause on recording. You pop it inside of the heater and you move it forward a little bit. Not a lot, because it's actually you know it's got it underneath on clips you don't need to pull it out completely uh, at this stage so once you get to there you'll notice you can see two lugs behind it and two tx20 torque screws okay now at this point you want to put your gear stick back push the lever down on your ashtray and pull out and then look down here to get your torch again so you can actually see what i'm looking at and I'm going to need to illuminate this a bit better, guys. Hold on. 
Okay, I've sort of wedged my torch for you, hopefully you can see a bit better. But this platform here, this rubber thing, lifts up. Now you normally don't need to scraper it up, you can sort of pull it away and it comes out completely. Just pop that to one side and underneath there you can see your diagnostic connector. Now I don't know if the torch is showing you clearly enough, but there's a TX20 here and a TX20 here. You need to remove both those TX20 screws. Uh, like so. So if we've got a TX20 handy. Yes, no, TX15. Here we go, TX20. So we're going to remove both those screws now. And I'll update you when they're out. Okay, both screws are out. Now the reason I don't remove those first before I start unclipping something is because in the past I've noticed people un remove those two screws first and then start levering up. And what that does is snap the top two brackets off this. Yeah, so it ends up going that way, it sort of levers it up and it can break the top too. So if you pop it first, like I showed you, it just takes the strain off the top edge of it and then you, your screws quite literally just let it easily pull forward and out and you've still got your two clips either side intact that aren't damaged. It's just a little tip, like I say, I've done loads of them over the years and, and these sort of things, you don't want to break it and have to go to the scrapyard or buy a new one from Peugeot, it's it just, you know, a bit of care, yeah? So put that to one side and we've now got access to the other clips that you can see right here. Sorry, get the camera in focus, just here, and your other TX20s that are either side. Take your two TX20s out. With them out, it's worth noting, noting that if you're putting all your screws together in the gear lever area like I am, the bigger ones are from the top and the smaller ones with the finer thread are from down underneath. Okay, don't mix them up because you'll strip out the... Uh, little holders that they sit in. You should now be able to take your keys out and remove the radio. Both hands needed for this. Okay, now these can stick. The, this one had stuck on the right hand edge here and it took a little bit of levering with the plastic tool just to get it to pop. There you go, you can take that out. Intact, save that in case you ever sell the car obviously and you need to refit your original radio. Your radio at the top quite simply just comes out now. There's a little plastic bar in the way here so it will rest on that if you need it to. Pull it forwards. If you're worried about damaging, you know, everything below it, put a piece of cardboard or a foam pad underneath it just to rest the radio on. Good little tip, because obviously it's a painted surface, you don't want it scratching it, the radio is metal. So if your radio placed on something soft, so nothing's going to get damaged, I've actually put a little bag over the gear lever there just to make sure we don't scratch that. You can then move on to your connectors. They're pretty straightforward, they're like a lever system, so all you quite literally do is pinch the bottom, there's like a pinch area here, pinch it, rotate, and out it will pop. There we go, that's out and free. Aerials, they've got a pinch again at the bottom, pinch and pull, both came out there. There you go, look, little pinch aerial on the bottom, so you just, just push it in and it'll come out. Take your radio away. Obviously, why you've still got access to this, if you forgot and left a CD in, plug it back in now and get it ejected. A lot of people leave CDs in radios and then need it fishing out afterwards. Much easier way you can get access to the wiring to get the CD out. Just a tip. Okay, so if you fit in a double DIN, a big radio, you know, one of the, the bigger screen radios, you're going to need to get a hacksaw or some snips and cut out this plastic bar. Just literally trim it each side nice and neatly. It's nothing, it's just a little plastic bar. Look, you can take that out and then your double DIN, your bigger radio will fit. If you fit in a single DIN radio, the normal size radio, obviously leave it in and it will fit just here. You can use your fascia adapter to make the space the right shape. Moving on to your fascia. Sorry if the pitch goes a bit foggy every now and again, guys. It's actually minus three degrees at the moment and very damp, so my lens keeps uh, getting fogged up. And this is an outside job, so <laughs> it's not, uh, not ideal. Okay, so there's your fascia. There's your pocket to make it the right size. Dead easy, as you can imagine. Your fascia just literally sits over the top. You've got two mounting lugs at the bottom here that you line up and clip it in. It doesn't sit too well at the moment, but it will do once you get the framing that holds the thing in place, okay? Next thing for us to do is to run the power cable to the fuse box. It's a very nice and easy job on one of these. You just pop the red wire that comes with the kit down here, out the bottom, and then up into the fuse box there. So we'll get one of those for you. There we go. Here's our wiring harness adapter, the one that I showed you the packet for earlier. It has a red power cable that you can see here. This is the one that we feed through here and end up coming out here where the fuse box is. 
Here's your aerial adapter that I showed you earlier on to convert from a FACRA connection like the car has to a normal aerial. You'll notice it has a powered filter cable and this just plugs in next to the red cable. This, this blue wire is normally loose, yeah? So all you do is shove it in, make sure it goes the right way around, look. So bear in mind which way it's crimped and just put it in exactly the same way. It just shoves in and clicks into place so that you've got another little connector that's going to push in there, look on the end of it. So go ahead now and uh, pop all that in and we'll update once that's done. Seems to have gone foggy again. Oh dear. Uh, just to point out, if any of this is, you know, a little bit confusing or a little bit worrying, don't attempt it. Take it to a professional. At the end of the day, I've got to state I'm not liable for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle that happens through you following this video guide. If you're unsure in any way, take it to a professional, pay them to do the job. They are insured. Likewise, if you have any questions regarding this car or any other car for that matter, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you the same working day. Just a quickly update then guys. We've fed our power cable through from the radio aperture and what we're going to use is a fuse spur. Okay, again, get these off Amazon or eBay. They're normally a couple of quid and they hold two fuses. So we've got a 10 amp here to run the actual radio and the spare slot there will be the five amp fuse that we pull out of the fuse box. We pull it, connected it together, a bit of electrical tape over that or shrink wrap, take your pick. Do not be tempted to twist cables together. I have seen car fires arise from bodging like that. Make sure you use a proper connector, solder it together, heat shrink, etc. Don't twist wires together. Okay, so we're gonna go pull our five amp fuse out now like so there you go there's your five amp and that's going to go now in the spare slot on the fuse spur okay and then plug the fuse spur in where the fuse came from so in effect you end up with that yeah and then get your fuse spur and plug that in the original slot that it came from might need a torch it's very dark and the fuse box is set back quite far and there's our fuse spur plugged in, okay? Now, just bear in mind, there's a little courtesy light sits here for lighting up the footwell. Don't let the power wire rest on top of the bulb because the bulb gets red hot and it will melt the power cable. Make sure you cable tie it up to, you know, one of these loom wires that's here so it's out the way of the, the bulb on the light and it's not going to melt through. You can then go along now and start connecting your aerial connectors and things like that. Quick update for you guys. We've basically shoved the cage in. Push the uh, trim as flush as it'll go. Now, these trims are an aftermarket trim. They tend to fit not great, in all honesty, this particular one. You know, not lining up too good. And sometimes you have to bend them a bit to get them in. It is normal, I'm afraid. Um, bear with it. You know, you are putting an aftermarket radio in, so it'll look all right when it's done. But personally, you know, they're not great fit. It's just a, a side thought of mine, if you like. Various brands on the market, the Connect 2 one I've used here is actually a more premium one, so make that as you will. Okay, so when you've got to this stage, you've clicked in your ISO adapter onto your main wiring, and you've also clicked in the cable that comes with your Kenwood stereo. Okay, you've also clicked in your aerial adapter. They're all push fit, so the aerial adapter is a push fit. You'll notice on the other end of the aerial adapter, I'll just show you, come here. That there's two plugs yeah and you're only using one does not matter in the slightest you can actually get aerial adapters that plug into both but it makes no odds so there we go that's that's no no problem at all and your wiring like i say is plugged into your main harness where are we down here that we unplug from the back you can see that there there we go you unplug that from the back of the radio and now we've just connected it up to our new harness okay now go and put the heater front back on again put your screws back in which I'll do now and then carry on with the video. There we go. Heater pushed back on again. Screws put back in. Then you can get your little uh, cubby hole thing, whatever you want to call it, pop that back in. It's a little grommet, so it just shoves in. Ashtray, simply push the top down and it slides straight in. Uh, fit here as you can see not too great unfortunately not a lot I can do about that like I say this trim is a particularly bad one <laughs> I've seen a lot of these and this one's not faring too good but still you can now go and connect the power connector uh, speed connector and also the aerial adapter on the radio and plug your radio in at last leave the pocket out now so you can get your hand behind it to pull the cables down out of the way 
And there we go. Radio in. Leave it an inch or so forwards. Don't shove it all the way in because it needs to sit under the lip. So the cage here needs to sit under the lip of this bit. You can put this in first, okay? I've left it out on this one, like I say, so I can get my hand under. And also the fact that this trim is actually a really bad fit and it wouldn't flex enough to get it in. So it's up to you. You could put that in first, but what you don't want to do is bunch your wires up behind your radio when you shove it back because you can obviously catch one and, and cause a short. So now you can put your trip your pocket in as well and then we get to test the radio. And there we are, finished article. All you got to do now is put your ignition on and make sure it remembers a radio station, which if you followed this guy correctly, it will do. There we go, Let's pop it on. And we have a radio station. Just turn it down there, tuned in onto number six there, just to test it. Turn your ignition off and on again, just to make absolutely certain it's got it. If for some reason it's not remembering your radio stations, you'll notice the wiring that comes with the radio, the little loom that comes with it. There's a red and yellow wire on them. They have bullet connectors in the middle of the red and yellow wire. Just pull them apart and switch them around so that red goes to yellow and yellow goes to red. Pop them back together put them in and that will sort out that problem. If you've got the correct wiring harness adapter, the one that I showed you in this video, you will not need to do that. It's just plug and play. Okay. So there you go. That is how you fit a radio on a 2008 Peugeot 308. It also covers all the years that this model was made on. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.